made a busy history of the DLC Middle and Middle and project. Um, there will be more, maybe, today talk about the, where we are and where we're going uh, tomorrow in the support session. So please, please come if you're interested. And uh, yeah, this has nothing to do with my job, so whatever I might say is uh, just uh, my opinion. So uh, first about me, um, so I joined, I joined the project um, as a student 12 years ago. Um, at the time, the project was actually still based at the university where I happened to be studying, so it was kind of easy. And then when I graduated uh, three years later, then I just carried on, but um, as a hobbyist, on my free time. And joined Nokia. Didn't uh, didn't pan out very well, as uh, most people would know. Um, <laughs> nowadays, I'm working for Nvidia, so I'm still doing mobile mobile development there, but nothing to do with um, with video as such. So this is where the video app was uh, started. So a campus of the uh, French University. And the story is such that uh, well, in 1989, they wanted to bring a network computer network to. Uh, the student dormitories, and because they didn't have anything there, I mean, they were talking to the TGAs anyway, and they made a very bad choice. Uh, they decided to go with Token Ring. I don't think anybody remembers what that even is, okay? So the oldest people might even know, might know the name. Do you even remember how the sockets look like? Because we still have them there. Um, so uh, in 1996, uh, they found a way to upgrade uh, to Ethernet. And uh, to, to, to do that, they had to pitch the idea that they would be streaming video over the network. And that's how they got straight up to basically give away the infrastructure. Because it obviously, if there were students, they didn't have any money to actually pay for that. Um, and that didn't really work because fast Ethernet isn't really fast enough. Or oh, it was 10 megabits at the time for streaming video. So in 2002, they upgraded again. And this time doing a multicast, and again they got it for a pretty, pretty steep discount, but for another vendor. So the VLC itself started in 1996. Um, basically, the idea was to stream video. Uh, initially, it was to stream video on the network. Um, but uh, we only have the project history going back to 1998, I think, that because it just the original project was so badly written that they just restarted from scratch. Yeah. Imported the new thing into CVS, uh, well, 17 years ago, so it's still quite a lot, a lot of time. And went uh, open source with the university's permission in 2000. Uh, before that, it was, it was a free closed source. Um, well, it wasn't closed for very long. So that's when it started becoming more popular. In 2001, we had Windows support, I think. And basically, people started contributing from outside the university from that date onward. In 2008, um, there were not really any students at the campus who were interested in the project anymore, so we just created our own foundation, and we have been independent since then. So the foundation is made of uh, well, the main developers and contributors. Our revenues are coming solely from donations, which means we don't actually have that much money. Um, we don't have advertising revenue, we don't have much subsidies. So it's really just covering uh, our own, our own uh, conference and then traveling infrastructure, network infrastructure, legal trademarks, both like domain names, that kind of things. Hardware, hardware for development and testing. And uh, here we have our, our yearly meeting, and these are a few of the work photos. So um, 2004. Finally, had uh, stuff mostly working, and, and since it had been open source for a few years, um, that was the reference slide at the time. So this is actually a slide that was made 11 years ago, trying to explain what the project was doing at the time, and it's still more or less what it is doing. So um, in those four years, they, added, they were initially only able to receive streaming from the network, but they added support for obviously local file payback, which is what most people are using nowadays, I think. Um, I mean, VLC has become de facto the player that you saw anything and it just plays it. And, and I think most people are using uh, actually playing local files. But originally it was really meant to play uh, network streams, live streams. Um, but this is very old. Um, so since then we have 
actually we've created a few projects and we've also discarded old ones. So as you can see this sorry, this time we have a separate VLS and VOD servers they, they no longer exist. Um, VLS is doing everything nowadays, both um, client and servers. We have a bunch of other tools that are mostly less known because they are not uh, mainly because they are not user user and user applications, so of course. Of course, you probably don't, 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 don't get to use them so, so often. Um, we have a lot of libraries. Again, this is not so popular, so well known because these are not end user facing, facing things. I mean, uh, they are extremely useful, and especially X264 is extremely popular with the uh, uh, content industry. I mean, a lot of DVD Blu rays are actually uh, not, not DVDs, Blu rays would be encoded with X264, so also TV channels might be encoded with X264. Um, but of course, um, this is mostly professional, um, so you, you don't you don't get to uh, hear, the, hear about the press so much. And those playback libraries are actually included in VLC and in a bunch of other media players, but they are under the hood, so you don't really see them. Um, so the player is uh, what we are most famous for, and um, that's more well, focused. So VLC is story itself, so as just a player. Um, as I was saying earlier, we, we got the source code. Um, started in 1998. We had the first uh, working Linux version that could play live video in 1999. And since we got open source in 2000, people joined, and that's how we got uh, Windows Port, which is when the project started becoming more famous, um, especially outside the university and even outside France. Um, support for streaming output, so for actually sending stuff out of VLC rather than just receiving and playing locally, came in 2003. And uh, we are reach our, like, we are kind of full featured goal of version 1.0 in 2009 after we become already a separate foundation. And uh, those are two key milestones we've reached since then. Um, so we switched from our original GPL license to, to the lesser GPL license in uh, 2011. That's uh, that because we realized that the market was such that uh, we probably would get more interest from companies if we switch to a slightly more liberal uh, license. So the idea is that we can now embed, embed our media playback engine in, uh, in, uh, in your own application, even if it's not a GPL application. So it could be another open source license, so it could be proprietary. In 2012, we got version 2.0 and also the first release of the uh, Android mobile uh, UI, which is actually a separate code base, but the same engine. So VLC is known for playing a lot of different files, but it's also known for being uh, highly versatile and portable. And uh, we support uh, weird OSs that nobody's using anymore. OS2, I think it probably has one developer and two users. Uh, <laughs> um, originally, we are on Linux, but of course, uh, we, most of our users are on Windows and, and Mac OS, uh, desktop side, and uh, iPhone and Android on the mobile side. And our motto is that we basically pay everything. Except, <laughs> except encrypted, encrypted stuff, which we can't play. I'm not going to list all the codecs because um, I think there's about 200 codecs and 100 file formats. I don't even know all of them myself. Um, and when we say VLC, in reality, VLC itself is only a few hundred, a few, yeah, 300 lines of code, I think. So all of the logic is actually in our media engine library. The VLC is a high level like play, pause, yeah. next, uh, volume control of the very high level media player controls. It's only 6,000 lines. And then most of the logic is, it's more dirty, dirty little details are in the core library, which is about 60,000 lines of code, of code, sorry. But all of the specific format, codecs, source, like local files, disk, HTTP on the protocols, all the video output, all the OS specific outputs and audio, audio, audio and video features are in modules which are then plugged in. It's kind of similar to GStreamer if you're familiar with that one. And we have a lot of um, different inputs and outputs. Um, obviously we can play files, CDs, DVDs, Blu-rays. We can play uh, digital TV if you have a TV stick. 
you can play the camera and the microphone, so that's not so useful for a media player. Um, and of course, nowadays, a lot of streams are streamed via HTTP or derivatives of HTTP, like HLS. Or Adobe, or well, there's a lot of Dash, quite a few different protocols that are HTTP based. Um, file formats, okay, I'm not going to go through all of them. Uh, if there's any specific question about them, um, can raise it. And data flow is pretty typical of a uh, media player, so we have the input, we call access for some mediatic reason. Then we have the parser file with the DMX and then we have the decoders, filters and output. And I think uh, that's pretty much what I have.